Okay, hello everyone uh, that is here in Zoom room two at the TESOL convention. We're here for uh, Best of EVO 2022. Uh, we welcome you from all parts of the world uh, with good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Um, we have two presentations lined up for you today. One is, and the first one will be on grammar for TESOL. And the second one will be on uh, ludic languages, um, pedagogy. And uh, we will discuss that later, secondly. So um, without further ado, I'm going to let the speakers for uh, grammar for TESOL introduce themselves and start the presentation. And one more uh, item, if you could please put your full name and maybe even the country uh, into your name or into the chat. We'd like to know where you're from um, so that we have a record of it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Christine. I'm going to start screen sharing now. Okay, can you see my slides? Yeah. Yes, Nagla, yeah. everything is perfect. Okay. All right. Hello, everyone. This is Nagla Salem speaking to you from Toronto, Canada. Um, so for this year's uh, Best of Evo for Grammar for TESOL, my co-moderator, uh, Masahit Watanabe, and myself decided to focus on uh, purposeful reflection and how it was really pivotal to um, the professional development experience we offered in Grammar for TESOL. So our plan for today, um, I will be talking first about um, the session Achieved Outcomes and Weekly Focus, uh, the platform and the participants, and then Wata and myself will be uh, talking about the different ways we incorporated uh, reflection opportunities for our participants uh, throughout the, the five weeks. And then finally, we'll be talking about our own moderator reflections. So this is the moderating team, myself and Masahit Watanabe from Japan. Um, so um, Grammar for TESOL started in 2020, EVO 2020, and uh, Wata was one of the uh, very keen participants. And then uh, later on, he joined me as a co-moderator, and this is his second, uh, this was his second year uh, co-moderating Grammar for TESOL. A huge shout out to Wata for his continued support and valuable contributions to Grammar for TESOL. Um, so as you can see here, um, the achieved outcomes uh, were uh, mostly we, we started looking at um, getting, getting participants to reflect on their uh, beliefs when it comes to grammar learning and grammar teaching, um, more theoretical aspects looking at grammar content knowledge and pedagogical content knowledge. And then the second half of uh, the session was mostly geared towards uh, getting participants to um, apply that knowledge and uh, also draw upon their um, articulated beliefs um, as to how they can apply them to uh, grammar lesson plans, uh, uh, instructional activities that, uh, that are grammar focused, also um, looking at samples of error correction and then towards the end, we got them to reflect on professional development goals and, and think about plans to, to act out those goals. Um, as you can see, the weekly focus um, reflected here uh, the, the objectives that I've just talked about. Um, our uh, LMS, our learning management system was Canvas. Uh, we also had live meetings every Saturday on Zoom and those live meetings uh, wrapped up the previous week's activities and introduced the uh, incoming ones. And th these were recorded as well for, for those participants who are unable to attend. Um, a lot of online tools were used for for content delivery. To name but a few, we had Padlet, Edpuzzle, Flipgrid, Google Docs, uh, Screencast-O-Matic, and we used various online presentation tools for uh, just to add variety. One of them was Genially. Um, and also participants were encouraged to, uh, to use those tools in, in their own contributions and in their task completion. 
Um, every week, uh, participants had one main focus that they were required to complete in addition to several other, uh, one main task uh, for each week. And then there were several other optional tasks that we, they were encouraged to complete. And most of them actually did uh, complete, even though they were optional. Um, and then after every, after completing every required weekly task, they got a weekly budget. And you can see here, uh, this is a screenshot of our leaderboard um, on Canvas. And you can see that uh, they, they were quite busy there. Uh, those who um, got all five weekly badges uh, were awarded the EVO 22 Certificate of Participation. And uh, 13 participants uh, got, to, uh, got that, that uh, certificate. Speaking of our wonderful participants, uh, 68 of them registered from 17 different countries all over the world. And you can see the list of the countries on the slide. Um, they varied in their levels of experience. We had teachers who had 20 plus uh, experience teaching. Um, and we also had beginner teachers. And it was interesting, those beginner teachers uh, shared with us in the introduction uh, and um, uh, orientation week, how they were looking uh, for this course to help them raise their confidence level when it comes to teaching uh, teaching grammar and, and, and using online tools to teach grammar as well. Uh, their teaching specializations uh, varied um, and their, their, their formats and so on. So some of them were EFL teachers, other taught at university. There were others who were teaching one-on-one. -on -one. And uh, a lot of them were teaching online, but there were others who have transitioned to face-to-face -face or a blended format. And of course, like with any other uh, uh, PD experience, they varied in their levels of digital confidence. And now I'm going to uh, give it over to Wata to tell us uh, about how we, uh, different ways that we integrated uh, reflection opportunities in, in Grammar for TESOL. Wata, you wanna go ahead? Yeah, thank you, Nagra. For your presentation, uh, Grammar for TESOL uh, provide three main fields for discussion, uh, Padlet, surveys, and discussion forums. Uh, would you please click the week one Padlet? Uh, as for the week one Padlet activity, uh, we asked participants uh, their metaphors for grammar. As you can see, um, paved uh, paths in the hiking or some long and winding road or uh, a house of bricks and so on, uh, or uh, boat navigating on the ocean, uh, the, body, the skeleton of the body, etc. Okay, going back to the slides. Uh, weekly Padlet, <coughs> would you please open it? Okay, uh, here uh, we, uh, the theme is uh, for uh, good grammar instruction practices. So uh, we set up four major uh, topics, purposeful, authentic, uh, perceived as relevant and useful at an appropriate level. As you can see, these four features are essential for good grammar instruction practice. As you can see on Padlet discussion board, uh, these four topics are aligned neatly on the board. Therefore, a uh, student can uh, transfer from one discussion to other uh, quite easily. Go back to the slides. We also conducted two uh, surveys. Week one, you and the grammar or English survey. Here we asked rather general but fundamental uh, questions. For example, how do you define grammar? Is grammar related to all of the four skills or is it related more to uh, some of the four skills than the others? Uh, and the, should grammar be taught implicitly or explicitly? Uh, each of the uh, two surveys is coupled with subsequent discussion forums. Uh, students can reflect on the uh, survey result. Okay, go on to the next slide. These are the postings we can find on discussion forums. Okay, go on to the next one. Okay, uh, what we have long considered true, so-called our 
preconceptions often do not apply to the others. If we can challenge our preconceptions, uh, this would uh, enhance our understanding. So uh, we uh, gave the survey results, uh, several images and graphs, and also a uh, short uh, keyword summary uh, for the messages posted uh, on the board. Uh, these uh, images and summaries uh, would enhance comparison among uh, participants. Okay, go on to the next slide. Okay, <coughs> click on the next slide. Oh, okay, oh. okay, yeah, uh, graphs and also click next, okay. We also uh, organized uh, several practical exercises. Uh, in week three, we asked participants to design grammar focused lesson plans uh, in which uh, instructional activities are administered. In week four, uh, we gave students sample errors of students and have our participants uh, correct student error and also have them give uh, feedback. And also uh, in week five, we uh, gave the video recordings of actual grammar instruction and the, uh, have them uh, complete observation checklist. Therefore, uh, participants can compare their actual uh, examples of practical exercise. And also uh, since these activities are posted on the discussion forums, uh, they can also compare their own with others and uh, reflect uh, their own uh, practical uh, activities, practical activities uh, by themselves. This would also uh, give our students a good opportunity for the correction. Okay, this is end of my part. So Nagra, please go on. Thank you very much, Wada. Um, so another way we got our participants to actively engage in the session content while also uh, taking into consideration their own teaching context was to use uh, Google Docs as a platform for uh, reflective collaborative reading. Um, an example, we use this article on grammar, uh, using grammar terminology in the foreign uh, language classroom uh, to get them to think about um, why they use or why they choose to use GT or grammar terminology or not use it in, uh, in, their, uh, in their own teaching. So this was also one way for them to reflect. Um, and then finally, as what I mentioned for week five, we got them to reflect on uh, what, where they want to go after the Grammar for TESOL experience and uh, what kind of um, uh, goals they have. And we also got them to reflect on their experience, the PD experience itself. So some of the um, self-identified PD goals were, uh, were a bit general. So there were some um, participants who mentioned that they feel that the course has got them to reconsider a lot of their teaching methodologies. And this is something that they would want to continue doing. Um, others talked about uh, how that it was um, confidence inducing for them and uh, specifically when it comes to teaching grammar and, and, and using technology for grammar lessons and that they would continue um, to, to, to gain more confidence in that respect. And then there were some more specific uh, self-identified goals like for example, one participant said that she wanted to incorporate the pedagogy of education for sustainability, which interestingly also gets students to reflect on uh, their own learning. Um, word clouds uh, got our participants to, just as they're looking forward and thinking ahead, they looked back at uh, the Grammar for TESOL PD experience. So we asked them to create accounts of that experience, what they gained and so on, and then uh, generate word clouds that would uh, show the prominent 
uh, ideas that came to their mind when they reflected on the experience. So here are some of very beautiful uh, uh, word clouds that our participants have created. And you can see uh, some of them have common uh, common words uh, and which reflect benefits and, and what they took out of that uh, experience and some different ones. So here are some examples. And here as well. Okay, so lastly, uh, we want to reflect on that question. What happens when teachers reflect on their grammar beliefs and practices? Um, and we found that several results uh, um, ensue. And, and those are um, when, when teachers are not just not just focusing on the how, but also focusing on the why, why they're doing what they're doing, uh, they become more open for change, more open to, to learn new methods, more open to uh, unlearn or relearn old methods. And this, again, uh, gets them to be more confident. And what we found was interesting was um, when our participants got to reflect on error correction and provision of feedback, um, several of them started thinking about getting learners themselves to reflect on their performance and reflect on their errors. So when, when we reflect, we encourage our learners as well to reflect. So they said we can uh, get our learners, for example, to uh, to reformulate their uh, whatever written text uh, and so on. They, we can ask them questions and this helps learners um, it, it develop feedback uptake literacy. Um, and of course, the, the ultimate uh, benefit goes to our students. So when we as teachers reflect and we encourage them and scaffold their reflection, they benefit a lot from that in their own learning. Um, and just as teachers and students reflect, we as moderators as well uh, reflect. And this is what we did all along during the five weeks. We had um, a hidden module on uh, on the Canvas uh, uh, LMS for Grammar for TESOL. And we had that as like a, a reflection journal. And this was the place where we kept all our questions and reflection on things that were going well or things that needed to be improved and so on. And uh, uh, hopefully we will uh, take that into consideration when we're working on Grammar for TESOL for EVO 23 and 24 and so on. Okay, so that's uh, that brings us to the end. Thank you very much for listening. Here are the references and that's it. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, uh, Nagra and Wata. And the floor is open to questions. Um, I've been monitoring the chat. There were some questions about uh, Padlet and the limit to certain uh, uh, numbers of posts. And Nelly suggested uh, that you download the Padlet as a PDF or even archive it uh, so that you open it up for uh, new Padlets, uh, uh, Padlet posts to be posted. Yeah, and that's what we did. We uh, we uh, downloaded it as PDF and then uploaded it so that participants can keep it as, as a record or, or a resource okay. for later. Yeah. Okay. And one more. Uh, could you please share the link or the or uh, yes, the link to your presentation to your slideshow? Sure. Yeah, sure. Let me do that right now. And it's in the chat. Let me know Great. that you can Thank access you. it. Thank yep. you very Perfect. much, Nagwa. You're Thank most you. welcome. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? Please uh, raise your yes. hand. Yes, there is one uh, by NASA. He asked, what is the difference between uh, feedback and reflecting? That's an interesting question. Um, you mean like feedback that we that we offer for students or feedback for us as teachers or that was Saba, no NASA. Sorry. Okay. 
All right. So what's the difference between feedback and reflecting? I think reflecting is or should be one of the elements of feedback. Like we, for us as teachers, okay, thank you, Saba. Um, so I, I think for us as teachers, reflecting is, is very, very important because uh, when you reflect, you you think about um, what is it that you want to, you look back and you look, uh, you look forward and uh, you think about steps to take. So you, ha you have that knowledge, you reflect. And then after that, of course, unused knowledge is, is not useful knowledge. So you think and you reflect and then you have some kind of a, a plan of action, right? So based on that, then this is, the, uh, this is what I want to do next. For us, uh, one of the things that we used uh, also so, of course, there were ample opportunities for our participants to give us feedback. So they gave us feedback uh, halfway through the session and continually, like for every single uh, weekly content, we had a discussion forum where they gave us some feedback and so on. And when we get that feedback, we start to reflect, like, where is this coming from? What is it that we need to do about that? And so on. So they're sort of, I don't know which one comes first, um, but they are complementary. Great question. Thank you so much. Okay, any other questions? I can't see any. I can just see the comment mm -hmm. that uh, people hope that you will be giving the same session next year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we intend to. Thank you. Okay, <laughs> great. Okay, I think we're ready to move to the next presentation. Jonathan, James, Rose, are you ready? Okay. So go ahead and share your screen. How's that looking? Is it looking okay? Uh, open it up wide. Yeah. 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 See it. yeah. Roger that. <clears throat> Great. Thank you. Oh, there's Jonathan. He's got a beard. <laughs> okay. Hey, James. <laughs> hey. Hello. How, how are you? All right. I'll start the stopwatch. <laughs> Uh, good evening, everyone from Japan. Uh, as we just learned from uh, Mr. Watanabe-san, he said, uh, konbanwa. Uh, so we are a multinational team based in Japan, um, Brazil, uh, the US and Russia. But uh, we'll, we'll come to that in a moment. So the moderators, here we are. Um, Rosebard based in Brazil, uh, River Swain based in the States, uh, Jonathan Dehan based in Japan and Catherine based in Russia and James based in, in Japan. So this is us, uh, all from different backgrounds. Uh, Rose has experience using Minecraft as a teaching tool. I have experience teaching with Minecraft. Catherine has experience teaching with Minecraft. Jonathan, do you have experience teaching with Minecraft? I teach my kids. Uh, anyway, that'll yeah. do. Uh, yeah. River is a, a student of mine who has learnt um about llp and about how to to learn with games and she has been keeping us on uh, you know keeping us a good timekeeper so uh, i'll move swiftly on so that's the moderators so the session um i will be taking on this section and then jonathan will be talking about outcomes briefly and finally rose will be talking about the lessons learned so in terms of our session um we had uh, a five-week class um five sync sessions on a sunday morning at 6 a.m japan time which we won't be doing next year because it's far too early um, but yeah the first class we introduce everyone to the the course the tools that we're going to use and our general um, approach to teaching with with games teaching languages with games and then we went in a, a different order because we're called ludic language pedagogy so it should be games language then pedagogy but we actually went in this order for the weekly classes we started with a class about pedagogy i.e how does one teach a language so thinking about ppp clt tblt and really you know um asking this the the participants to tell us um their thoughts about how languages are taught and then, of course, we would, we'd add some extras that they perhaps didn't know and, and you know, generate some discussions around that. So first of all, we, we, looked, we thought about how do we teach? 
the week three, we talked about games and play. And just, I think there's a little bit of a misconception about our, um, our focus. And it's not actually digital games. I think digital games only appeared as maybe um, you know a quarter of the content that we we taught the teachers about we talked about monopoly we talked about simon says we talked about um folk games running outside tig tag um we even had a look at um you know the the the, the tv program squid game um where maybe you know the squid game a korean tv program where anyway it, we looked at playground games from different cultures um, as a way to, to t- think about language and cultures and differences and similarities. So we, we talked about a lot of different things during this week, uh, games and play. Uh, then language was the final one uh, that we talked about, which was um, basically CLT style, um, grammar, vocabulary, communication, communication. And then we also looked at literacy skills. So digital literacy, gaming literacy, um, how to, you know, what is the difference between a tweet and um, a news article, you know, the, these, these ideas of different literacy skills that you can also teach as part of language teaching. And then putting it all together, um, the students would create uh, a lesson plan of some sort based on what we taught them. So the three main pillars of our approach, uh, pedagogical approach, a game or a playful activity, and then a, a, something to be taught with language, make a lesson plan. So let me just move swiftly on to um, the tools that we used. We only used minimal tools in our class. I, I, the previous talk mentioned uh, various different tools. We primarily used Google Docs and Discord. They were the main tools. I don't think we used, no, they didn't, students didn't have to use anything else. Uh, participants didn't have to use anything else. We actually had a single document, which was about 50 pages long, which we called the course book, which we added to each week um, where students, I say students, I mean participants uh, would help us fill in um, tables and charts and leave comments. So we had this single document, which was used for the whole uh, five week course. And this was our course book. And you can see here the, the affordances of this were that we could all write in this course book together during the live sessions. For example, here is um, page, I don't know, maybe page 20 or something where we have an activity and the participants are all filling in different games that they know. So we can get a, a, a good idea of what everybody knows um, before going on to the next, uh, next teachable uh, thing, basically. So yeah, we had this, and then we also had player worksheets, we called them. Um, and this was um, something for the participants to do as kind of a homework activity or an activity each week. And again, this was a single Google document for that participant for the five weeks. So all of their work was in one place, which they could then refer back to and then make their lesson plan at the bottom of the document. So it was, again, just trying to keep everything in one single place. And of course, we could use comments throughout. So you can see uh, Jonathan and myself, we've made some comments on this particular participant's um, lesson plan that she designed. Um, in terms of Discord, all um, of our sessions were recorded and we actually streamed them live onto Twitch and then took that video and put it onto YouTube. So everything was archived. Um, I wanted to mention just before Jonathan, we, we, do, we still have a, a minute here. So let me show you what I mean about the, I, I believe you can see these documents, right? Yeah. Okay. So this is a player worksheet that is that we designed as a template. And you can see that there is a table of contents where um, basically we wanted them to remove the, the cross when they'd finished that particular activity, just as a record uh, to show that they've done it. So this is a completely blank template that we created that we wanted them to fill in throughout the course. And here is a completed one where you can see this participant has um, removed the crosses, letting us know that she's completed that activity. Uh, you can see that she's filled in some of these sections. And finally, at the bottom, um, her lesson plan, which we've left the comments on um, at the bottom here. So this was how we kind of kept on top of um, the different participants' work. Okay, right. So I will go back to here and we'll look at some outcomes. There is a burger there. It's not random. Jonathan. Yeah, so James showed you uh, the things 
that the students put together at the bottom of their documents. And so we took some screenshots of their work to show you some examples of the lesson plans that the teachers put together. And so we've got one from Carlos, uh, this magic burger sequence of activities before, during and after one digital game. Um, so uh, we, we talked about the magic burger, right? Like you're familiar with PPP, we've got the magic burger. Um, and Barbara put together a scaffolding activity using a paper game to help students learn verbs and create short stories. Uh, so first, Carlos. Yep. And so yeah, as you can see, we, we organized, this is uh, Ludic Language Pedagogy, LLP. And so uh, this, the participants had to identify what ludic elements, what language elements, and what pedagogical elements they used in their lesson plan. And so you can see that Carlos is using a digital game, Keep Talking and Nobody Explodes. His language goals are to teach communicative skills and the pedagogy is a task-based approach, so TBLT. Uh, there's just a, an example of the game. This is the Keep Talking and Nobody Explodes. Uh, one person has a bomb that they have to dis diffuse. The other person's got a instruction manual with really complicated language. Um, so it's a really, really, fun, hectic, frantic information gap. Um, so, yep, that's, that's the game that Carlos used. And then uh, his lesson plan is here. So lesson one is learn. And so you can see that uh, he wants to explain some vocabulary in lesson two, there's play. So they're gonna play, keep talking, you know, when it explodes and, and they're gonna take notes on what they say. In lesson three, they analyze it, specifically looking at um, how do they improve their exchanges? How does their, their, their fluency improve over the course of the lesson? Lesson four, replay. That's, that's great. Do it again, right? This is, uh, this is one of the best things that, that teachers can do with games or with students is, is not just to use them as one shots, but have them replay them and hope for fluent and, and help fluency development. And then lesson five and six, right? Specifically looking at how did you improve so that the, the teacher knows what the students are improving in and the, and the students as well understand their own improvement. Um, so Carlos actually did teach this lesson plan and uh, found that students loved the class. Um, so that was a real success story. Barbara is our second example. Uh, Barbara, again, like, so the ludic, the language and the pedagogy, Barbara used Battleship. So this, that classic board game, um, uh, sort of a pen and paper game. The language was to have students write their own stories using the simple past. And the pedagogy was PPP. So you know, uh, uh, present, practice, produce. And so there are multiple stages to Barbara's lesson. Uh, the first uh, was to pre-teach some vo vocabulary and to teach them the original commercial game, battleship of guessing and, and, and responding. So, right, so uh, B4, is there a ship there? Uh, hit, miss, you sank my ship, that sort of thing. Next, um, they started, they, she remixed it, which was just really creative. And she had students uh, using regular and irregular past verbs instead of the ships. So changing it to, to verb, verbs and verb tenses. Then uh, they were using subjects and actions. So she put together a grid Right, and she had to, you know, did Peter study for the maths exam, right? And so now they're, they're making complete sentences using the grammar. And then they had to write a short story for the next class. They presented their written production. And there were also different um, extension activities that Barbara suggested uh, at the end of her lesson plan. There we go. There was a question no, yeah. questions at the end, I guess. Yep. Yes, at the mm -hmm. end. Yeah, yeah. Yes, okay. at the cool. end, definitely. Cool. Okay, so can you move to yeah, we're there. So we worked with um, reflecting on what worked for us. Um, we we talked about the session structure. It worked quite well to move slowly, you know, starting with the pedagogy, then discussing play um, and games, then language, how languages are learned. And then uh, the last week giving 
participants, the chance to uh, put it all together by creating. And through the lesson plans they created, we could see how much they really understood of all the, the, the concept of LOP at the end of the day. So the session structure worked really well for us. Also the tools. Um, using Discord, although new for most participants, um, it was also um, the, um, something that we're going to discuss in a minute, you know, difficult at first for some. And we, the Google Doc, uh, the course book and the player worksheet, this also uh, worked quite well for us. The mediation focus was always on community building, peer feedback, encouraging peer feedback, and giving lots of support for each other. So it was pretty nice to see that um, those who stayed until, you know, like really took this journey with us, that they really built this sense of community and um, participated actively, gave feedback and made questions and comments to each other all throughout and also using uh, the last week feedback system that we mm. asked them to complete. That was really mm. a plus to hear each other. Could you go to the next one, please? Now, some of the things that we thought we need to rethink is the term ludic in our session title, because that was like a lot uh, in the first and second week, you know, that um, people got a little bit like, what is ludic, <laughs> you know? And uh, it wasn't until the, the third week when we really worked on games and play that all fell into place. And they understand that we weren't talking really, <laughs> really about, um, uh, we wouldn't talk really about digital games, but all kinds of ludic activities. In Brazil, for instance, it's, this word is very easy to understand because we use it a lot and we understand it as child play, all sort of play. And that's the sense that we wanted our participants to, to see that language, play with the language, play with anything, any resource, games included, right? So. Um, so we think that we need to change or uh, use a term that is more aligned with the mainstream that teachers can understand for the session title next time. Discord new to most participants. We are wondering also how we can actually support more of the participants. In, in the first week, we had, <clears throat> we had more than 50 participants joining the Discord. But uh, in 30 actually introduced themselves in the first week, but only 50% stayed with us until the end and completed the session. So 50% um, of the 30, so about 50 participants, which is, I think, a very good number uh, because they were super active, super engaged, and they some of them continue to engage with us even today. Mm. So mm -hmm. I think that's it's pretty a uh, plus. Uh, the live sessions, we need to rethink that. The time zone is really difficult to accommodate with James and Jonathan and um, in Japan. Um, and we want also to create more space for live sharing with our participants. And um, these are the things that we are rethinking for the next year. year. Yep. And it was really a wonderful experience. Very different. <laughs> and that's us. This is just, yeah. I'll leave that there to say that we are, we, we exist. So yeah. Thanks, Rose. Okay. Um, are you ready for questions? Yes, please. I'll stop okay. screen sharing. Okay, so uh, questions from the audience, either here or in the chat. There, there were a few comments, and yep. there was a, a question about uh, the. Was there any difficulty understanding the games? Um, well, was there any difficulty? We only played a game with this with the participants one time. We played Spyfall and also Gartic Phone, right? Oh, we did so, play Gartic Phone, yeah. Um, yeah. So no, the, our, the participants had no problem understanding the games that we taught them. 
But our mm. session wasn't just about playing games or mm. teaching students mm-hmm. or teaching participants about games. It was more, much more about the pedagogy. So um, our session was about the, the, the participants using any game that they were familiar with in their classroom in a pedagogically enhanced way. So yeah. whatever they were familiar with. Just to add to that, then um, I showed you a table that we created together of games that, that we know. Mm. It wasn't yeah. that we were really bringing in any extra from our own um, back pocket. Right. Like, oh, you, you right. got to know about this game. It was more, what do we know? How can right. we use what, what, what do you, What do your yeah. students know? Things like that. Yeah. Dramatic good question. Yes, it's a good question. Yeah. It's a good question. I think it's also important to, uh, to mention that when we play the games, uh, with the participants, we, we had this reflective um, moment afterwards to put together all the, the pedagogy, the, what they learned, the language and pedagogy with the game they played. So I think this is always really helpful. So this practice of reflecting mm. to prepare them for mm. the, or the, the last stage of preparing the lesson plan. Yeah, if anything, what Rose is, Rose has mentioned just in during the uh, the the speak the the presentation is that perhaps we didn't play enough games with with the participants. Um, we could have played a lot more games and and discussed them in a lot more depth, which is something that we mm-hmm. we didn't do a lot of this time. To be yeah. honest, yeah. There was a request for you to yep. share your slides. So if somebody could post uh, the sure. link to the slideshow in the chat, that would be good. Yep. And if somebody has another question, uh, feel free to unmute yourself and ask it directly here in our session. Uh, someone also asked uh, about uh, the participants, if they found, if they managed with the games or did they find them difficult? Yeah, we just answered that one, I think. You did? Yeah. Okay, sorry. Yeah. It's okay. I think that... Um, Games are always fun and it's a great way to introduce an activity and actually to learn. But the thing for us teachers is that it takes more time yes. planning mm-hmm. when we're trying to apply games into our lesson plan. So I think that's that's pretty much the issue for us. And we prefer yeah, yeah. to leave it outside, <laughs> you know. Yeah. But yes, yes, it is definitely the best option. Mm-hmm. Thank you. I'm, I'm glad you recognize that. Just... Um, yeah. Oh, I think we just could uh, add a day for games and had fun. You know, it's like a Friday that you wear jeans, okay? You forget <laughs> about the uniform, so you can have a day for fun. Singing, uh, theater, games, okay? Something like that. Mm-hmm. Hello from Egypt. Can we say this uh, activities are dramatic, uh, dramatic activities? So ludic includes everything from role plays and and mm-hmm. improvisation, dramatic activities, mm-hmm. um, yeah, all the way up to, you know, um, mobile phone games and Xbox and PlayStation. Mm-hmm. We, we we consider all of this ludic essentially a play, uh, games, digital games. Yeah. So yes, mm-hmm. of course. Yeah, that's the thing with our session. We want to explain that notion. Um, of games just from the perspective, but also the game elements that are often we find in digital games that they are also ludic and, you know, like make-believe, um, pretending games. This is actually part of our practice already. We just don't um, maybe, you know, consider it ludic, but we should because it's fun to, to look at it from this perspective. I think Heike has a question. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Are we okay for time? Should we stop? I don't know. No, you're 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 good. Um, okay. Because we don't have another session, so we yay. Have, like, let's get let's get a few more questions. Heike, go ahead. Unmute yourself. Thank you. Uh, thanks a lot for this session because it's so refreshing. And uh, allow me to switch on my webcam. Um, a little bit on the mobile at the moment. Um, just one question. If you were to run the session, we hope, um, what would you do different? And would you perhaps also include games that uh, the students are not familiar with? Uh, the games that you yourself favorite a lot, which is Xbox and digital and video games, etc. cetera. Um, would you include those? 
Um, I, I mentioned it briefly just now, but I think that, yes, we could have spent a lot more time playing games with the participants and, and you know, deconstructing them and considering them as, as, as language learning tools. Um, I perhaps wouldn't play Xbox games with, with the students, but um, yeah, definitely more, you know, games that would perhaps match a uh, information gap activity, for example. Um, we had an example in, in Carlos's slide, but I don't see many teachers bringing a PC into the classroom just to play this game. But there are, you know, hundreds of games similar that um, you can play with just make make your own with pieces of paper so I think we we would definitely um, focus on that a bit more yeah yeah I, th I think yeah. I think it, we, we sort of uh, run sorry. the risk of, of height yeah, sorry oh sorry and no, I think that we Go would if we, if we if we did play a lot more games I think that would be great for for bonding the participants together but I I do think that all of us uh, on on the on the team don't want to hype games over the teaching Right. Mm -hmm. And so I think there's so much work that we can get into in terms of, you know, there's this really interesting relationship between as games advance and then as pedagogy advances, like it sort of has to go lockstep. Right. And so we don't just have to teach, you know, bingo vocabulary games, but but we can yeah. also try some other different ways of teaching and, and more, you know, conversational and improvis improvisational ways of teaching with students. And, and I think personally, yeah. I'd like to do that more in future sessions over playing more games with with participants. It's more um, about what the teacher does with the um, games than the games yeah. itself. Right. I was referring to a little bit more what Graham Stanley in his book, Digital Play, suggested because the students are familiar with mm -hmm. some games. Yeah. They play Minecraft, they play Roblox, but of course you can't play that in class and you shouldn't play it in class because when they play, they don't talk. But uh, it's always a good conversation topic for young learners, because as mm. soon as they start talking about their games that they play, they get mm -hmm. really talkative. And so uh, this is what Graham Stanley, as a pedagogical sort of uh, yeah. um, topic, suggested. Mm -hmm. uh, in class, why don't you talk about the games students play at home? Yeah, it's a wonderful point. Uh, Jane? She'll back me up here. I talked about this exact thing yesterday in a different talk uh, at Tessel. So yeah, Heike, thank you. It's, uh, if you can't play these digital games, yeah, I think the point here is that if you can't play the games that students know in the classroom, you can at least yeah, use it as a topic starter um, because you're, you're bringing their famili familiarity with the outside world into the classroom, which may help them um, learn the language. You know. Bit, bit also, the, also the stories behind the games are also great, you know, not only to teach language and vocabulary, but to think critically and to have mm. them create new ways to do things like transmedia storytelling or fun, mm -hmm. uh, fan fiction and all these elements, you know, that, yeah, wonderful. that's wonderful. That's what, you know, they love. What they love is the characters most of the time. Mm -hmm. the and they love to be part of that story too. So that's uh, an interesting way to uh, introduce games too. During the pandemic, uh, there was a popular game, Among Us. I don't know if oh, you've yeah. heard of it. Mm -hmm. I, I have a paper I remember, about it. You should read yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> we had virtual classes at that time. And I used to take, I downloaded the app uh, in my cell phone. And I used to take like free time just to play Among Us with them. I was lost most, most of the time, but they loved having me playing with them, something that they liked. I think most teachers play in class. Um, but what we need is to connect the games with uh, content. I think that will be better because it will help us not just to have a free time that will make us mm -hmm. lose focus, but something that we can take advantage in class. I found a, a website, Classcraft. No, 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 no,
with a content and I couldn't do it, but it is a great tool. I lost Minecraft uh, session that you had this week in Evo. I, I lost it. I missed it. And I'm going to watch the, the video, the recording. But yes, I think what we need is to take more games into class, but not losing the focusing content. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um, Which is difficult. Got which is why you should attend our session next year to figure out how to do it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, send we're, me a message. Yeah, We're 10 yeah. minutes. Uh, we, we've extended the Q&A period a little bit for uh, your session. I just wanted to give uh, equal time to Nagla mm. and Wata and yep. see if there are any more questions about grammar for TESOL because we do have a little bit leeway here regarding time just in case somebody thought of a burning question and didn't get to ask it. Grammar is not as exciting, I guess. <laughs> well, it depends, it can be. <laughs> I used to get very Actually, excited. Combine. Yeah, you can combine. Maybe you can use grammar with. Yeah, yeah. 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 Look, look at yeah. Look Pick the adjectives. Yeah. You know, oh, come yeah. and jump and color the like Quizlet's like like quiz no, 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 game. No, no. Uh, grammar. Grammar well, is Quizlet's not a grammar game. Question you and then play Quizlet live. It's definitely so like, exciting. Yes. In, in, terms of, in, ter in terms of grammar, um, did your did your session focus on uh, mostly like linguistic grammar, or did it also focus on like a like the grammar of film or the grammar of like or, an organizational sort of a genre approach, like a multimodal approach to grammar as well? Or, or is it that very mm, traditional grammar format? What, uh, did you want to get that? Yeah, uh, yeah we just uh, focus on some uh, practical uh, instructional uh, methods mainly. So uh, we uh, seldom refer to the some linguistic aspects of grammar, okay? So, uh, yeah, yeah, so, uh, yeah, that's quite uh, out of our uh, no, no, like, discussion, okay? So you you taught, you were working with the participants on how to teach grammar. Like, do you think that those instructional techniques could also be used to look at multimodal constructions and other forms of communication? other than speaking and uh, writing? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and as for the uh, grammar instruction, uh, we introduced some uh, basic concepts. For example, implicit uh, teaching or explicit teaching, uh, that all. And also uh, from uh, these uh, basic concepts, we also uh, organize some uh, practical activities that are useful for uh, daily uh, classroom situations. Mm. Thank, Thank you, Wada. I think what I can do now is just share with you um, the module pages for our, um, the grammar for TESOL. Like for every week, we, uh, on our very first page, we had a list of um, like the different tasks and so on. And then we had all, we listed all the tools um, that um, our part that we used and we encouraged our participants to use, um, in addition to any sort of uh, more specific grammar related key terms. Um, and then all along, as we said, like uh, all the different tools, um, like we encouraged them, for example, to use um, um, what is it called? The picto, picto chart, we, we encourage them to use Powtoons to create grammar lessons and, and to, to create grammar content for, for their, for their uh, students and so on. Um, I'm not sure we got really into uh, a lot of like using games, um, but we like we didn't really go beyond just the usual Kahoot and, and Quizlet and, and so on, but uh, not, not the way that um, you guys uh, used games. I think maybe we should consider that next time. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Well, I think we're about to I, wrap it up. I Rose actually wants to Rose? Yeah, yes. I actually okay. have a question. Um, 
in one of the feedback you received from the participants, I was going to ask, but like Kristen said, you know, it, it stayed there. Um, it was mentioned pedagogy of education for sustainability. So I wonder, I wonder how um, that fit is, fits in with the grammar teaching. What, what kind of approach is that? I got curious to actually learn about this. Well, that was my very first time to learn about this as well. And uh, uh, that participant got to, uh, I asked her and she posted uh, the, the main principles of uh, the Education for Sustainability pedagogy. And she said that some of the principles include critical thinking. And um, one, of the, um, one of the activities is to get students to reflect on their own learning. Um, another principle was collaborative learning as well. So. Um, she said that she would take that into consideration as she's creating future grammar lessons and and instructional activities. Oh, I see. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, it was it was new knowledge for me as well. Uh -huh. Yeah, it, it seems it seems to fit um, as well with the uh, concept of thinking about learning, right? Like in the grammar realm, what grammar I'm learning how we use that grammar and that kind of thing, right? Like how critically you actually apply language. Yeah, that's exactly. nice. It's something to look for, yeah. to learn more about. Cool, mm -hmm. thank you. Okay, I would like to thank both teams here, the presenters and also the facilitators from the um, Electronic Village Online uh, for being here. Uh, these presentations were, again, very good, very interesting, and we encourage everyone to participate in the actual sessions. The best of the uh, EVO sessions take place between January and February, and we're going to gear up for the next round uh, pretty soon. So look for the call for proposals uh, coming out in early July. And so this is just a little plug for EVO. And here, Best of EVO is just a summary of what happened during the sessions. And of course, uh, they were very exciting. So um, I would like to thank everybody for being here on behalf of the call interest section of TESOL and on behalf of EVO. So. Have a good day and we hope to see you again this afternoon for another session uh, with, uh, with two more uh, presentations.